Yeah, what, one of the most common warning signs that you're dealing with that one third of the population that's dysfunctional, highly likely to have destructive addictions operating in their life is if you hear from someone that their phone has died. Right? My, my phone has never died. So people's credit scores essentially correlate with how much charge they, they keep on their phones. So responsible adults keep their, their phones charged. But if, if someone can't keep their phone charged, if someone uses the excuse that their phone died, like uh, Andrew Huberman, who was uh, number one uh, health and fitness uh, podcaster, was exposed in New York Magazine over, over the past week, and he would often use the excuse when he's operating six simultaneous girlfriend relationships, oh, my, my phone died. That's always a warning sign that someone's dysfunctional. And so one has to be you know, very wary about allowing anyone into your life who is that dysfunctional because this, this is just a symptom. This is just, this is just the, the, the little movement on, on top of the water that, that reflects the whole maelstrom going on under the water. So people who can't show up on time, who say that their phone died, people who you know, bounce checks, all right, uh, these are not people that you can build a you know, solid community or, or bond with. They're just going to be an endless source of chaos. So about a third of the population out there is probably going to be much more of a sense of, bring much more of a sense of, of chaos into your life. So good people make you feel good. Bad people make you feel bad. We have to, to build our foundations on our connections with good, solid people. That's very true and fascinating about those factoids you brought up with regard to credit scores and uh, phone uh, phone dysfunction, phone charge failures. That's uh, something I'll definitely keep in mind. Uh, I, I never, I never, that, that never came uh, at all. To, it never came across my mind that there would be such a correlation uh, and what the correlation would mean. But uh, it's definitely interesting. Uh, anyhow, now moving on to uh, something else. Before we unfortunately go, uh, there is the matter of uh, people who are secular looking to religion as a means of, I think it could be very generally stated, warding off problems brought about by the state of modern society. Uh, Joe Rogan uh, finding religion, uh, I think that's a fair way to put it. Uh, When I say find religion, I don't mean he's a devoted uh, follower of anything now, but he sees the value behind it, and he speaks favorably of it. I think that's the best way of, of, of sort of paraphrasing his, his viewpoint. Uh, perhaps Luke will have other words about it, but uh, that's interesting. Even Blair White, the transvestite, uh, I refer to transsexuals and transgenders as transvestites. That's always the way they refer to <laughs> from the time I was a boy. I don't see a reason to change now. Uh, I don't really make the distinction between trans this and trans that. It's all trans to me. Uh, so uh, I, I think that uh, even Blair White saying that I that uh, there was some attraction to religion had or that uh, it, White was going to go to church or something like that on Easter. Uh, that that's that's really interesting uh, because as part of this shift where people who were uh, quite secular now are. Uh, sort of seeing the value, public figures who are quite secular are seeing the value in religion uh, to one degree or another. I'm talking about organized supernatural religion here. Uh, Luke, uh, you undoubtedly have far more to say about this than I do. And your commentary, no question, will be much more interesting than my own. Anything to share here? Yeah, it's an interesting trend among many secular people who are now suddenly talking about God from James Lindsay to Russell Brand in the United Kingdom to Joe Rogan to Andrew Huberman and and others like why this sudden pivot to God and and I think uh, one thing that's that's going on is basic balance theory right we all feel much more comfortable when we're in balance and, and podcasters find it much more comfortable to be in balance with their audience. And so these, these dissident podcasters, Joe Rogan, Russell Brand, uh, Andrew Huberman, et, et cetera, they've got audiences that are overwhelmingly Christian or at least Christian influenced. And so it's very difficult to operate a, a podcast without increasingly getting in sync with your audience. If you alienate your audience, your, your whole business model is, is destroyed. So there's this overwhelming temptation to tell your audience what it wants to hear. Now, it, it does mark you out as a weak man if you 
if you fall into this, but it, it's yeah. a, a dominant trend going on right now. Uh, second point is that uh, belief in God means absolutely nothing, right? There's nothing that you can take away from it and then predict about someone's behavior. Now, if someone commits to Orthodox Christianity or Orthodox Judaism or some high intensity religion, then you can expect some behavioral changes because those traditional communities, these high intensity communities will demand that you uphold a certain type of uh, behavior, at least in, in public, and th there will be severe consequences, including expulsion if you don't. So the, these uh, podcasters, you know, the Russell Brands, Joe Rogan's, uh, Andrew Huberman, they're, they're talking about God and prayer because there's nothing about talking about God and prayer that stops you from having as much sex as you want. Right? There's nothing about invoking God and prayer and maintaining six simultaneous uh, girlfriend relationships while lying to everyone and, and pretending to be exclusive with each one and, and uh, very possibly passing along sexually transmitted diseases because you're having unprotected sex because the women think that they're in an exclusive relationship with you. You can do anything th with belief in God. It doesn't require anything of you. So a, a common critique by the religious of spirituality is that spirituality is an attempt to get the benefits of religion without paying the price. You can't join a religion without paying a price, right? Religion demands certain things from you. Belief in God and spirituality doesn't really demand anything of you. Now, there are many benefits to spirituality that religion doesn't have. Uh, uh, spirituality has you know, many valid critiques of religion. Religion frequently just becomes a, a meaningless performance of uh, rote rituals and just you know, following along the path that your family has, has trod. And so you just do, do things without, without thinking and it doesn't have much meaning or resonance to you and it doesn't really affect the, the quality of how you treat yourself or, or other people. So th there are valid critiques in both ways. But this uh, God pivot that I see going on among the major dissident uh, podcasters it's not the type of God pivot that brings with it personal sacrifice. And if your, your God pivot or your spirituality pivot does not bring personal sacrifice, I don't think there's much significance to it. I mean, if you join a 12-step program, there are certain principles and practices that you're expected to uphold. And if you don't, you then fall out of balance with your community and you become alienated from that which is keeping you sane and sober. And, and so, too, with a the religion, there, there are certain forms of public behavior that are essential. If you want to maintain a, a place in a high-intensity religion. But just pivoting to God is, is cheap grace, right? There's no sacrifice that these Joe Rogans, Russell Brand, and Andrew Huberman are taking on. There's nothing that they are giving up for, for this pivot to God. It, it's cheap grace. And finally, this, this idea that uh, pivoting to God or... Religion is, is the tool for subduing uh, social chaos. Again, that's cheap grace. It's, it's seeking an easy solution for something that's much more difficult. There are far better predictors of stability aside from religion. All right? If someone simply has friends and family, good relations with their family, they're married with, with kids, all right, they are far more likely to be stable than someone who's religious and, and not connected with, with a family and is unable to sustain friendships. So you can't shortchange the qualities that are necessary for leading a respectable life by embracing God, by embracing religion, by embracing spirituality. There's no cheap grace. There's no shortcut. God is not some magic elixir. Religion is not a, a magic elixir. It's not this magic wand is going to tame social chaos. Religion can just as likely be a tool that uh, encourages social chaos. So people want the cheap grace. People want the magic trick. People want the magic key. People want that one easy trick to, to tame a confusing world. And so many will cling on to religion or belief in God or spirituality to try to make the, the universe cohere for them. And that can be functional for a while. But in the final analysis, for biological questions, you need you know, biological solutions. For physiological problems, you need physiological solutions. For uh, emotional problems, you need emotional solutions. For social problems, you need social solutions. It's not like God, spirituality, religion is just the magic key that, that answers everything. And I have often succumbed to this. And I've often been extreme in my religious devotion. And I've seized on religion as the magic key that explains all of life, and this will 
make uh, everything much, much better. And it was incredibly appealing to me because it just made life so much more simple. Ah, I could just concentrate on studying Torah. I could just concentrate on, on doing the mitzvahs. And then I'd be bringing God's presence into my life, into the world, into the community, and everything would go much better. But all this was being coming through a, a deeply flawed individual. I had physiological problems such as ADHD that, that meant that nothing that I did was going to get any traction until I addressed the ADHD. I had certain emotional addictions going that, that meant nothing was going to get much traction with me. You know, no religion, no God talk, no self-help, no nothing was going to get much traction with me until I addressed the emotional addictions. I had all sorts of compulsions. I had all sorts of self-destructive patterns. I had all sorts of needless uh, compression and, and pulling down and unnecessary tension going on in my life that was making my life smaller and smaller and smaller and, and you know, more and more awkward. And until, you know, I addressed these things, uh, God was not going to solve them. Religion was not going to solve them. Spirituality is not going to solve them. There's no magic key. Pass.